So hello everybody, I'm here with Thomas Cramp. Uh, she will lead a very exciting panel here about Asia at the web. So I would like to know how your experience is at Hong Kong and how social media actually in China, what is going on? Okay, well let's talk about not just China, but talk about Asia. And okay. in terms of Asia, it's a very different world out there. Uh, with Asia, you have these tremendously different cultures, very different from country to country, and tremendously different levels of internet penetration, and I guess what I'd call digital topography. You have somewhere like Korea, which has uh, you know as high uh, internet penetration as somewhere like Sweden. You know they have 95 percent high-speed broadband versus somewhere like Cambodia, where there is uh, a very low level of internet penetration. Yet there are interesting variations. For example, in Cambodia, you have uh, a very high, one of the highest levels of penetration of uh, uh, mobile phones versus uh, landlines. Okay. So you end up getting these interesting situations where new things and new services and new, new ways of doing things are, are evolving. What do you think about different devices? Are there already a lot of netbooks in Asia or do they use their mobile more? Or? Yeah, Asia really, if you look at Asia, mobile, mobile, mobile. It's a hugely mobile part of the world. Japan has some of the most interesting and advanced mobile services. The caution I'd have about this is, like a lot of things in Asia, you don't know whether it's going to export, whether it's just something that's going to be able to stay in that country, in that culture, because some of them are very precise to that culture. One of the more interesting ones in Japan, for example, is a, a service called Otetsudai Networks, which allows uh, uh, people to log on to their mobile phones, say where they are, you're a student, uh, you have a free afternoon, you're sitting in the Starbucks and you'd like to do a job. This is you, you have experience working at a service, 7-Eleven, uh, you have experience flipping hamburgers, and you're free for the next two hours. Somebody on the other side from a restaurant will log on and say, okay, I've got three students in the neighborhood, one has more experience than the other, the other, but the other one's free for more hours. I'll take him. So the student sitting in the coffee shop looking at his mobile phone will get a, a ring and they'll go over and work for a few hours. It, it turns into this sort of very virtual mobile workforce, which is an example of the, the kind of some of the mobile innovation that you can get. Yeah. Are you using it yourself? Like writing. Oh, Tetsudai Networks. I've not used like, Tetsudai Networks. Uh, writing articles. I'm free tomorrow. You I'm can free get tomorrow me to write first feature. No, or... I haven't done that. But it's, it's, it's really what it is, is it, it's a GPS enabled. Uh, you know, you know, classic thing that you see outside of major cities, uh, uh, often in developing countries, where you have a bunch of men standing around waiting to work, do manual labor for the day. The difference is these are wealthy, urban, young people who are being used for semi-skilled labor. So it's creating this new fluid market for semi-skilled labor. And that's just one of the, the, the you know, mobile applications that we're seeing. So, and if somebody wants to learn more, what's the URL of your blog? Oh, for my blog, <laughs> thomascrampton.com, originally enough, okay. uh, which I'm writing about internet in Asia uh, and love comments and, and reactions. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.